You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to colour your own flowers so that they look like something expensively gorgeous and shabby chic. You'll be using Copic markers, starburst sprays from Lindy's Stamp Gang and some stickles for that final bit of bling. I know that shabby chic and vintage is pretty hot. Um, I've been known to do a little bit of that myself. So this is a special vintage flower bouquet. Now you'll need some white paper flowers. I like the mulberry paper flowers. These particular ones are from I Am Roses. So I've got a couple of different sizes, big ones and little ones. If you don't have Copic markers, of course you can always use your Pro markers or any other alcohol based ink marker. Now it does need to be the alcohol markers. Uh, you can get similar effects with watercolour markers. You'll just need to be a little bit more careful and play around with the technique a bit. So what do you need? You will need some Copic Various Ink. This is the blending or colourless blending ink. I've got a Copic R39, R35, E31 and E35. Some white flowers of course. Some creme brulee cream, starburst spray from Lindy's Stamp Gang and your favourite stickles. To start with grab the palest brown of the Copics which is E31 and just colour in all of your flowers. And what I mean by that is just literally colour in the petals. Now I don't want you to be perfect here. A little imperfection in this technique is good. So just a quick going over. I don't even want you to colour in all of the white. Just as quickly as you can scrub the colour over the petal just to get some of that colour on there. You can see I've got sort of scrappy little bits here that aren't particularly coloured. That's okay, that's all that you need. You may choose to colour the backs of some of the ones that you can get to. You might not. That's up to you. It doesn't really matter. I like to just add a little colour to the back here. Just in case you see the flower from an odd angle. On the tighter petals at the top, all you'll be able to do is dab a little bit of colour onto those. That's fine. They don't need to be evenly coloured. At this point, your flower should look a little bit like this. Now you'll notice that it's not all coloured. This is exactly how it's supposed to be right now. Make sure to leave a little white. Now for these smaller flowers, because they're so tight and so tiny, all you can really do is just sort of dab that colour around. Get it on as many of the petals as you can, at least some on each. As long as there's a little bit of brown on there, that's all that really matters. So this one, as you can see, it's um, a bit ratty looking, but that's all you'll need to do. Alright, so that was E31 and all of my little flowers now have a base colour. Next to grab E35. And what I want you to do is just go and edge the flower petals in E35. Again, you can see that I'm just being quite rough. You don't need to be particularly fancy or careful with this. Just get that colour on. In fact, when you're doing vintage flowers, sometimes the rougher it is, the better they look. If you lay that colour on too perfectly, they don't really kind of look real. I realise it's a fake flower, but they just don't look quite right. So get that colour on roughly until it looks a little bit like this. So you've just got that colour down. You're going to do that to the rest of the flowers as well. Again, just roughly. Now I'll often do one or two extra flowers at this stage, just in case anything bad happens. I have been known to accidentally drip ink on them and ruin them. <laughs> um, I'm a bit of a messy crafter. And a couple of extra flowers never goes astray. It's always easier to make a couple extra than it is to try and recreate something later as well. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the R35. And this is just adding a little bit of red into the mix. Or in this case, it's technically coral. 
Now I'm just using the edge of the Copic marker for this. If you use the tip, not only can the rough paper flower damage the tip, but you'll sort of get little swipes and streaks where you might not have wanted them. If you use the edge, it's only making contact with the, the, the very tip of the flower because it's a flat surface. Now on this large one, I'm making sure to add a little bit to these back edges of the flowers. So at the moment, they look like this. You've got the vintage brown as the base color, the darker brown over the top, and then that first layer of red. For this last red, which is R39, I'm only going to add it to the center of the medium and larger flowers. So I'm just going to add a little bit just to the tips on these smaller ones. And then this medium sized one, I'm just going to add it in the middle. So not on all of the outside petals. And now what we're going to do is use the Copic Various Ink and drip it all over the flowers. Now what that does is it bleeds the colours into each other a little bit and it also softens them. So I like to just drip it onto the flowers. Now this is an alcohol product so you need to use it in a well ventilated area. So I just drip it on each of the petals. Now I'm not even using drops here, I'm just literally squeezing the tip and letting it run down the paper. Because the paper is porous, it sucks from the bottle and just sort of sucks down the side of the flowers. The next step is to dry the flowers with a heat gun. Now this is really important, if you let them air dry you won't achieve the same effects. The heat gun actually results in what looks like almost burnt looking edges, they're gorgeous. You end up with something like this. Now those tips are much darker than the colour I originally put on. The next step is just to spray these all over with the creme brulee cream. This just adds a little bit of shimmer. Now you could skip this step if you want to, but I just like that extra bit of sparkle. Well, that's kind of me. Now the only problem you might have is that with some brands of roses the water-based products make the green on the leaves run so you'll just need to see how that goes. The flowers don't actually need to be dried with a heat gun at this stage. You could leave them to air dry. I just like the heat gun because it's a little bit quicker. Alright so just check out that gorgeous shimmer from the Starburst spray I just added. That really makes it for me. It is just super stunning. Now I actually like the fact that the green runs because you get a little bit of variation on the edges of the roses. And for me that looks a little bit more realistic so I, I don't actually mind that the green on here runs a little bit. I really like the way that that looks. Alright, now you need to leave these until they're completely dry. And then we have the stickles. The platinum stickles. Now because this has such, it looks like a variety of colours, I'm not sure if it actually is, but um, it's got a few different sort of colour variations in there, I'm going to be able to use this. So what you need to do, and you can't do this until right at the end here, because the glue in the stickles will act as a resist and it won't colour the flowers properly. I like to prime it on a piece of scrap paper. And I love the nice fine nozzles here. Now you can choose to go stickles crazy and put it everywhere or just add it to the tips on a few flower petals. Now with these you'll never be quite sure which edge will be facing up or if the whole thing will be facing up so you just need to add the stickles so that no matter which direction the flower ends up there's something pretty to look at. It 
to make sure you've got it I just like to twist the flower around just to make sure there's something from all angles and then of course just let these dry and lastly this bigger rose it's much easier to see what I'm doing on this one so I'm just touching the edges of each of the petals You can see I'm only really adding the tiniest little bit, but because it's got so much glitter packed into that little bottle, that's all it really needs. Now try not to get blobs. If you get blobs, just use the, the little tip to um, get rid of them. And then you just need to put these aside somewhere to dry. So I'll just give you a closer look at this fantastically gorgeous larger flower. You can see that the stickles just adds that final touch that the flower needed to just make it beautiful. I think that adding the starburst spray and the stickles just adds a touch of glamour to this gorgeous showy chic flower. So I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing how to make these gorgeous coloured flowers using Copics, Lindy's Stamp Gang Starbursts and of course the gorgeous stickles. And don't limit yourself to just the showy chic look. You could make these in any colour that you like. The technique is the same. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching how I made these shabby chic flowers and that hopefully it will inspire you to make a few of your own. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.